We're going to do a quick video on naming hydrocarbons that are specifically referred to as a branched hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon that is classified as a branch means that there is going to be a carbon skeleton, which we'll talk about again how to identify a carbon skeleton within a branch molecule. So here is an example. In previous naming, all you had to do was name molecules that in essence were part, everything was part of the carbon skeleton. A carbon skeleton is defined as the longest chain of connected carbons within a molecule. So here you have a molecule that has three ends of carbons. So I'll kind of highlight this is a carbon that's on an end, this is a carbon that's on an end, and this is a carbon that's on an end. In the previous examples of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, we had only two ends, and that's what makes the carbon skeleton only um, a very easy molecule to name. So here's what we do. To name a branch molecule, what we do in a very simple form, this is how I would start doing it. In your first time doing it, you have not yet mastered it, so let's try and go through this process. So what you do is you try and find a string of connected carbons. So there is a string right there. There are more to do, so I kind of, I'm kind i going to change the color so that we can isolate these. Here's another option in light blue. And in red, here's a third option. So what we have to do is decide which of these lines is actually the longest line. How many, which one has the most number of carbons going through it? Hopefully you can count and you recognize that this blue line right here is the actual longest. So we count how many carbons. That's our, that is going to be our carbon skeleton. So I circle it. I name what's in the circle. From last video, you should have um, determined that this would be a heptane because it has a seven carbon link. It's an ane because it is all single bonds. For this class, we will not be doing anything that has double bonds and a branch. Everything's going to be single bonded, so there'll be, or there'll be no issues. So this is heptane. And now what I do is I'm going to circle the remaining portion that is not within the carbon skeleton, which is right there. So how many carbons are in there is one. So I'm going to put meth in front. To identify that it's a branch, they add a YL ending to that prefix. So methyl heptane is going to be the majority of this name. The last thing we have to do is identify the location of this branch. So what I do is I go back to my carbon skeleton and I utilize the same rules as with double bonds. I'm going to have to count in both directions of the carbon skeleton. So I have one, two, three, four, five. It's either the fifth carbon as its location or if I count from right to left, it's one, two, three. So I'm going to choose a direction that is actually the lower number, which would be the three. So therefore, the proper name of this would be 3-methylheptane. Okay? Look at how I did everything. This is the carbon skeleton name. So find the carbon skeleton, put that down. This is the number of carbons in the branch. This signifies, the YL signifies that you have a branch and the three indicates the location of the branch. So every part of this name has a reason for being there. So let's try one. Let's see if you can do one on your own using the same technique. Look at how I mark this up. I suggest doing the same thing. You can pause it once you get the diagram and then figure out the answer right after. So here is the example that I would choose. So name that. Press pause, come back to it, and then I'll explain. All right, welcome back. So what you should have done first is go through and identify which is the carbon skeleton. So which line is the longest? It looks like the orange line is actually the longest here. If you chose the red because that was the one that you saw first, you did not go through the process properly. 
So you have to choose the longest connecting chain. This is the carbon skeleton right here. So I will circle that. Then I circle the remaining. So what I will do is I will name the orange. The orange is a pentane. The green circled is a meth. It is a branch. And now I count. One, two, three, four. Sorry, my computer just shut off, or my screen. So I'm going to do this manually. One, two, three. Or if I go the opposite direction, one, two, three. So it doesn't matter in which way I would count for this one. So this would be a three, now I'm doing it by my mouse, sorry. Three methyl pentane. Okay? So let's try another example. Again, by my mouse, I don't have my pen right now, my computer. My projection board just shut off. So we did this one in class, but for those that potentially weren't, was not present, this was a good one that I did that differentiated and, and let students know if they were following the rules. So name this. I'm just going to add the hydrogens. Press pause. Come back. All right. What most people do if they get this wrong is they, again, don't follow the process of recognizing where is the longest chain. If you chose as an answer, 2-ethylpropane, you did not do the process right. That is the most common wrong answer because you chose this as your carbon skeleton and this as your branch, but that is incorrect. Here is your carbon skeleton. Your carbon skeleton does not have to go straight across. It can make turns. You're finding the longest connection of carbon to carbon, regardless if it turns left, right, up, or down. So this is a butane. So circle that. Butane. And again, it is a methyl butane and where is the location it is off of the second carbon so one two so that's why it's a two methyl butane all right so that's an instruction of how to do branched diagram or branch hydrocarbons um, on google classroom and in class we'll do more examples but that is a an introduction to doing branch hydrocarbons